if you're playing the new category game, you actually have to accept that and know that that's actually one of the biggest things you got to do as a company. You have to make payroll and build software and make the leads mm -hmm. and get the thing and do all, all that hard stuff. And Chris, maybe 50% of your time is telling people, this is a problem. This is what it looks like. The thing that solves a problem is called Trainual, and it's a blank. Yeah. You actually have to install that in the world. What's up, everybody? I'm Chris Ronzio, founder and CEO of Trainual, and this is Process Makes Perfect. As always, we're talking with experts in process creation, automation, and delegation, basically the people that make business easier. You just heard Greg Head, and this episode is all about the process of selecting the right category for your business. Greg's the CEO of Scaling Point, which provides consulting and workshops to early stage tech companies. He's also the founder of Greg's List, a curated and up-to-date list of software companies and tech jobs in Phoenix, Salt Lake City, Dallas, Chicago, Atlanta, Boston, and soon to be many more cities. He's had an amazing career so far with early stage experience at ACT, the contact manager that millions of people used in the 90s. Then he co-founded Sales Logics, which was the first mid-market CRM software, which went public in 1999, and he was the CMO of Infusionsoft, where he helped them grow from 15 million to over 100 million in annual recurring revenue. In Arizona, he's basically a legend in our startup scene, and I've been fortunate to learn a lot from him. What I liked about this episode is we talk in depth about how to create a category, what that means, and examples from Trainual, because this is an active conversation we're having right now about creating the category for playbook software. So listen in, you'll get to hear me and Greg talking pretty candidly about what we're doing and some advice for your business. Can this business thrive without the owner? You've got to start putting systems and processes in place. If you don't use the systems, the business will break. We're always looking to buy back our time. You cannot say something once and expect that it actually is received. This is the way we work. A big motivation in that for me is creating a job for myself that I really enjoy. This is how you discover your vision. And this is Process Makes Perfect. Hey everyone, welcome to Process Makes Perfect. I'm your host, Chris Ronzio, and as you heard in the intro today, we're talking with Greg Head. Greg, what's up? Hey Chris, how's it going? Awesome, thanks so much for being here. I was excited to catch up with you. Yeah, it's been a while since we've chatted. It has, all right, so for anyone that doesn't know Greg, uh, I met Greg here in Arizona through Russ Perry, so some of you might have heard of Design Pickle. Uh, Greg, I remember seeing you at an event. I don't remember what event it was, but Russ was talking to you and I was so intimidated to walk over <laughs> and talk to you because I knew you were a really important marketing person. So, oh my goodness. Yeah. Just so older. When I, was, when I was launching Trainual, you were so helpful. Like first month of launching it, we got on the phone and you really talked me through the difference between a lifestyle business and a true growth yeah. business. Yeah. So it was very inspiring. Thank you. Yeah, and you're an inspiring entrepreneur, so it's it's fun to help you. So when you were talking to Russ uh, when you met me, was he dressed up in his pickle costume? <laughs> Not at the time. Oh, okay, because he goes I around think... conferences in his pickle costume, and uh, people have pictures of me talking to Russ, who I know, and I remember before, you know, Russ before Design Pickle and everything. Uh, you know, I we're, we get to talking seriously, and people take pictures of us because he's in a pickle out, you know, costume and like you know, like a banana suit or whatever. His pickle crazy, suit. Yeah. yeah. But it crazy. worked. So for anyone yeah. that doesn't know Russ, check that out and that that story yeah. out. But Greg, so what we're going to talk about today is category creation. I remember early on in Trainual, I was preparing for a pitch. And you walked me through category being one of these things that you've got to nail because people don't know where to put you as a business yeah. and they don't know how to position you or who, who to compare you to. And so it was really helpful for me, something we're still working through. So we're going to yeah, get to the that. categories. Yeah. But I, I, I know you've got the, the six points of a scaling system. Category is one of yeah. them. So yeah. for everyone listening, can you walk through that? Uh, through the system? Through the six points. Just what Yeah, are so... Yeah. So uh, I spent 30 years in software, running software businesses, product, marketing, and the rest. And uh, there's laws of nature that haven't changed. These exist in our brains, and they were there before tech and after tech, and it works for politics and everything else. And there's books about all of these things, unique selling proposition, category, your why, and all that. And I kind of have a simple unified theory to work with entrepreneurs and create messaging and strategy and get through all those 
sticky decisions. Uh, I call it the scaling point uh, system. Um, and you can find it at scalingpoint.com. And the six elements that you can't really take one away and you don't need to add 10 more or 20, but these are the things that underlie everything a company does and every message they send out. And uh, the first is category. That's your first, that's the what is it uh, question. Um, the second is your target customer, which is the who is it for question. So those so, you know, those are product and market of product market fit. Yeah. Um, and the third is benefit, which is different than category and target customer. That's the why should your target customer care about it? What's in it for them? Differentiation, which you can be differentiated on benefits. You can be differentiated in category. So they kind of have to separate them and to play that out. Um, purpose, which is a new thing for companies to be and to communicate to the world. Mm -hmm. uh, when we see Nike, we, and we wear a Nike shoes, we also are buying their purpose of caring about diversity and Colin Kaepernick, right, which they seem to bet wisely on uh, themselves. But not every, 30 years ago, we didn't put purpose in the, in the thing itself. Now the shoe has purpose. And the last one is credibility, which is taken for granted, not considered. But in startup world, especially for new category creators, have a new thing and nobody's heard about it yet and they're small or whatever, which is where it all starts for all of them. That's really important and it has to be managed. So I'm, I'm working with a big company, software company that you've heard of right now, and we're going through this process. Uh, it's especially powerful for early stage uh, founders. Mm, getting out of startup, we tried a bunch of stuff. It's starting to feel like there's some shape to it. We're kind of onto something. Uh, that's the thrash before investors kind of show up and say, oh, I get it. And, <laughs> you know, and scale. So there's product market and fit and product market fit and scale that goes in there. So, um, so it works for everything, but I have, what I do for a living is uh, that therapy and uh, intense uh, consulting with entrepreneurs like you. I think consulting is entrepreneur therapy. So I, I, yeah, I right. assume when I was doing it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So at what size of a business are they touching each of these six? Is it, you know, the zero to one, one to 10 million, a 10 to a hundred? Yeah. Are there different yeah. maturity points that you're focused on each of these? Uh, no, they're, um, they act, they're, they exist a hundred percent of the time at every stage and okay. in everything, in every politician in every music and every idea in every device, in every food in every, every, uh, stock, every book, you know, we, we play these things. Uh, what is the category? Who is it for? What's in it for me? That's just the, the uh, people, cities, it's always there. Hmm. Uh, but when you start uh, a company, um, you know, generally uh, startup, let's call tech startups, Generally, they, they're doing an ADD experimental exercise. They go around and try a bunch of stuff and they try this on and well, you run around and see what, what's working and the rest. Uh, that's uh, kind of like lean startup. You've got to widen the aperture, try a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but between startup and scale, which is usually between a million and five million for an ambitious growth company, you actually have to settle down and stop saying, for you today, I'm that. For you today, I'm that. What's your category? Yeah. Depends. Hey, for you, you actually have to declare yourself. It has to be sharp and so forth. So dot, 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 all the companies that are growing fast or trends that are happening in the world that are moving fast or musicians that are getting fame or hot stocks or whatever, um, they've gone from that ADD to their OCD. We, we could be all these things. We're just this now. Yeah. We, we could sell to everybody. We just sell to these people. And so that's kind of a move that makes, it's kind of counterintuitive, you've seen this, but you, um, you actually narrow your focus, what you are for whom, as you grow. Yeah. And, okay. And um, yeah. So I want to dig deeper into category. Of course, that's what yes. we're going to talk about, the yes. process of building a category. And that's the first point. So how often is someone creating a category from scratch versus fitting into an existing category? Well, that's kind of the first thing. Uh, actually, the first thing is categories are kind of hidden in plain sight. They're in everything. They're in everywhere. It's everything on Amazon has a category. Every restaurant on Yelp is categorized. 
Um, it's, it's, but we just don't see it. So hmm. the first thing is to understand that categories exist and they're important. And then you have to determine which category game you're playing. So that was kind of my interrogation of you in the first day, which is, is it another one of these in an existing category? Uh, is it like what big companies do, only it's for small companies? So this category, but for a different car customer. Or is it really a new category? It's like a thing that hasn't existed before. Yeah. And so uh, it's people get confused about those. So people mm. don't know that there's categories and then they're playing the wrong category game. They think they're creating a new category and they're not. They're just another one of these. Yeah. And they got to compete in other ways. Or they're just trying to compete on you know, selling, but people still aren't clear what the thing is yet. And it's not like anything else. And so you actually have to decide what game you're playing. Generally speaking in tech and funding and high growth, it's a new category game. Investors generally play that horse race. Uh, nobody's doing it now. Some days everybody's going to be doing it and we'll have a word for it. Smartphone, ride share, uh, COVID tracker, water bottle, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, it's like, None, all of these things that exist and are big didn't exist. I'm old enough to remember when almost all the stuff I could see around here, widescreen monitor, whiteboard, uh, noise canceling headphones, just all the stuff we Google all day long, hmm. like didn't exist. So it's not everybody's playing that. Uh, nobody's seen this before. And some days everybody's going to be doing it. It's kind of strange. That's why, you know, it's not so obvious and it's way harder than people think. So as you know. That's interesting. Yeah. So it's, you so know? it's either an existing category or it's a version of an existing category for a different yes. customer or it's yeah. a new category, a new word entirely. And you're trying right. to figure out what it is. That's correct. I, I know. I remember watching Shark Tank when they talk about, uh, I don't want to invest because I don't want to be the one to educate the market. So if you're yeah. creating a category, how much do you pour into educating people on what the category is? Yeah. So uh, if that, so that if that's the game you're playing, right? Uh, that uh, and you got to confirm that. Meaning, I've got a new thing, and I show it to people, and you and then you say, "What do you call that?" And they say, "I don't know what to call it. It's not that. It's not this. It's it's not an LMS in your case. It's not yeah. a Google Doc. It's not just folder with everything in it. Uh, it's not a brain dump. It's it's something else. But ooh, 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 and right? I want to get into that too. I, wanna, I, yeah. got, I have some so, questions for you. Yeah. So if you're playing the new category game, you actually have to accept that and know that that's actually one of the biggest things you got to do as a company. You have to make payroll and build software and make the leads mm -hmm. and get the thing and do all, all that hard stuff. And Chris, maybe fifty percent of your time is telling people. This is a problem. This is what it looks like. The thing that solves a problem is called trainual and it's a blank. Yeah. You actually have to install that in the world. Yeah. Uh, quinoa, um, COVID mask, N95 mask, quinoa. whatever. Like the crowd <laughs> didn't make this up. A crazy person said, I'm going to install quinoa in the world. And they took the flag out and they told the story and repeated it over and over again. And you know, Johnny Appleseed across the country and repeat and repeat and repeat. Um, that's one way to lose the game is uh, not take category creation seriously. Hmm. Uh, either you, your category doesn't get big or somebody else comes in and takes it over. Yeah. Yeah. So very timely. I mean, we're going through this right now. Yes, we had a yeah. big conversation last end of last year. One of our 2020 initiatives was to yes. really put the flag in the ground and define this category. And so when we looked at what people call us, you know, there's LMS, wiki, knowledge base, yeah. intranet, training management. It's funny, actually, before I got on this call, I got a message from G2, the review site, that we actually got rated number one for SOPs and number one for training management, which which for me is like what we've always straddled is like this operation side yeah. and this HR yeah. side. So we've been calling it the playbook for your business, the yeah. playbook uh -huh. category. Yeah. And I'm curious what, what you think of that. Well, uh, that's a great question. And so uh, what the world doesn't see uh, is and I've been part of category creation in several different companies and industries and markets. And that's kind of the therapy I provide for founders. So we'll play the, play the game here. Yeah. Uh, what the world doesn't see is, first of all, the crowd doesn't make these things up. 
they don't get together and say, we're going to call it this. Yeah. Right. They're crazy people who push it out in the world, make up the words. I know that, you know, some friends of mine were in the room when the words CRM were made up mm. by Tom Siebel and his game. So like these, they're always made up by people and the rest. So I think you have to take into account what, if you don't create a category and get out there, they're going to put you in the buckets that they see. Yeah. Like they, they can't not put you into an existing bucket, Chris, and they don't know how to create your category for you. Right. So you actually have to say, I know you want to do this, but unlike this, we do this. It's different. And they have to nod their head and you say, we call it X. And I could see you moving through some X's. And then you have to install that. And then it has to show up on those review sites and in Google and the rest. Yeah. So I've helped create words with companies that I've worked for and others that now are the words people Google. Hmm. So that, you know, that's the mountain you got to climb. And generally speaking, the bigger the VC investment, the more they're saying, we're buying a category that someday will be big and we're investing in the leader who's going to walk away with the prize. Yeah. That's the so, category. Game. Yeah. So it's a, it's a crazy person that comes up with the word and the crowd doesn't make yes. it up. But as you're, if, if someone here is doing something new, you're, they're listening to yes. this and they've got something new and they don't quite know what to call it. Are there places you can draw inspiration from? Like where, where are you going to come up with this crazy thing that in a way that sticks and it's not just a vague, you know, boring term. Yeah. So there's a couple rules for the category game. So, you know, like there's way more structure to this game that people see. It's not like, Hey, it's creative and art. Like Steve jobs was all structure and it looked like he made it up on the fly. Mm -hmm. Right. It's very structured. So uh, a couple rules, like a category name, something that we Google, and somebody says, hey, I got this problem. And then everybody around us, the entrepreneur group says, oh, no, you've got to get X. you got to get venture debt. you got to do co-working, right? All these yeah. words were made up. And I was there for some of those. Like, the, here's, the def, here's the criteria, the rules, if you have a category name. First of all, it has to be practical. Sorry. Like, by the way, you, you can't say a new category name and then people go, oh, I totally get it. I'm on board. No, you have to then keep selling do that. But it has to drill be practical. It, drill it in. <laughs> yes, right. You have to start selling then. It has to be, pra it has to be true. Mm -hmm. Like people come up with these highfalutin names that nobody but it would ever repeat. Right? Uh, we're in the, we're an entertainment, uh, you know, uh, we're a happiness company. <laughs> no, happiness is your benefit. You're a theme park. <laughs> right look at that like disney and all the magic and all the brand and all the super stuff it's a theme park yeah like and by the way like theme park like who made that up somebody <laughs> did so so there's, but you know we could attach to it those are words right those are just mm -hmm. words uh the, it has to be generally descriptive when we say theme park it's different than a, a roller coaster ride or a pool or something like that Right. And the last one, it has to be kind of differentiated. It says we're not like the other things. Um, chicken sandwich is not a hamburger, right? And so, because you would say, hey, uh, we're going to go for chicken sandwiches. Where would I go? We are going to go to, you know, we're going to Disney. You know, what other, and if you looked at other ones, you'd look Google theme park, right? Or, you know, hotels and whatever. So, <laughs> uh, if you want to make something big, you've got to deal with the category game. So, so playbook. To see if it plays that category. We'll just do this here. Is it, it would people say this? Would, hey, man, what you need is playbook software. Hey, man, I'm struggling with this. You need playbook software. Yeah, uh, I say it. I want yeah, a playbook it, for my business. Yes, right. And by the way, people wouldn't make it up. We have to teach them to say it. Yeah. I say quinoa and smartphone and that's like it's been drilled into my brain, right? Yeah. Uh, and you know, the stuff we Google, we've been trained. That's what you call the thing. Oh, oh, yes. Okay, right. Okay. So what do we call TikTok now? The video social media thing, is it? What do we call it? I don't know. Social I don't know. Media? Yeah, it's, but it's video social media. Now everybody's uh, talking crack. about it. I think we could call it Yeah, crack. it's addictive or something <laughs> like that. You know, short form mobile videos they have on their website. Yeah. You know, just get me in the neighborhood, all that kind of stuff. So, so you could see that... Uh, let's just play this game here. We have a little time. I'll do a quick version. Okay. Chris, where are you from? Boston. Okay. Uh, if I were in Boston, if you and I were in Boston right now, and, and I said, where are you from? And you said Boston, they would probably think, 
what are you from? Are you a Southie? And what kind of place kind of thing? So, so if we were in Boston, what would you say? Franklin. Okay. And if you were, we were at a bar in Franklin and somebody says, Hey man, where do you live? You'd say, I live over there. Or down the that neighborhood. Street, whatever. Yeah. Right. And if you're in France and somebody said, where are you from? You'd say, probably say Boston, then kind of get it. Right. Yeah. Something like yeah. that. So it depends. You're kind of create a range here. And so your playbook is pretty good. It's not LMS. It's not all this corporate BS words. Mm -hmm. By the way, we hate all that shit. <laughs> Excuse my French training and all that. Uh, most people hate that stuff, right? Yeah. Do, do you have that feeling training is, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Training is yeah, good. But like it's, yes, yes things. right. It's all that stuff. And LMS, that's corporate words. We want to be that, not be that. Yeah. And, but on the other side are more practical words, which I see you use in your page titles around SEO right now. Uh, uh, right. Onboarding, mm -hmm. SOP, yep. uh, employee, what do we say here? Employee handbook. So there's yep. some concrete examples. So uh, a million times and through the loudest mouthpieces you can, you have to repeat the story. Hey, when you're tired of, you know what, you want what big companies have to get their employees up and running faster um, and scale your business and get it out of your head. Uh, and it's things like onboarding the rest. We call it playbook software. So you need playbook software. Don't get LMS, get playbook software. It has this, this, and this. Playbook software, playbook software, playbook software. So, you know, that's, that's how that game works. And we also, it we doesn't also work if somebody, if somebody won't uh, repeat it back to you. Oh, like I was there to help make up the words and take it to the world of contact management, which hmm. is different than sales automation. I was like, we made up the words. We installed them. People said contact management, but by the way, it was about contacts and management. And you described it and they're like, oh, contact management, I get it. So it's not like your address book and it's not like big corporate software. It's contact management, contact. And so that was ACT in the 90s and 4 million users, so the leader mm -hmm. of the category. Create a category, be the leader of the category means you're the yeah. educator, evangelist, grow the category. Yeah, I love that. Well, for anyone listening that's trying to create a category, of course, look up every all the content Greg has on this. We actually reached out to some of the software review sites and asked them what it would take to add our category to their list. And they just said they needed to see some validation of other examples. And so all year we've been collecting examples yes. so that we can get it, right. get it on the list. There's the credibility game. Yeah. Because like, you know, people say, hey, I got this new thing, man. It's called the we. And we're all like, no. We don't want a new thing. Our brains are like, no, right? That's what we do. Hey, man, yeah. this is amazing. It's a totally new thing. You should try this. No, right? And then we wait for the crowd and all of this. And we're doing things we didn't do 10 years ago. Uh, uh, Zoom, what do we call these? Um, Teleconference. Drink, you know, like, no, Zoom, like we're doing like uh, uh, people, people are having fun with like Zoom night uh drinking together. What do we call this? There's a word for that. happy hour. Yeah. Zoom happy hour, zoom happy hour. Right. Yeah. So like that didn't exist, yeah. but they see how it's descriptive. It's different that you, you know, we'd say zoom happy hour, but like we should have a zoom happy hour. People, Virtual happy my hour. people say, yeah, what, what's that? But now they, you know, we're kind of over Get that. It. Like, yeah. Oh, do it. And so anything that like that going up that product adoption curve and it's big now, it has to have simple word. Yeah. Sorry. We yeah. cannot do something at scale unless it's simple. This is the Great most complicated point. device inside there in our brain. It's just like Apple or Android, which looks better on me. I mean, <laughs> yeah. simple, like billions. It has to be so simple to scale. And that's the, the thing here. So, so what have you tried before Playbook? You've had, um, what, 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 do you, what, have, what have we tried as categories? Yeah, I mean, uh, onboarding, training, training management, knowledge management, um, but all, all of them felt a little off. And you know, it's funny, as we see our competitors or people that the market would compare us to, I see features that they offer that I don't want to build because it's not congruent with my vision for what a playbook is. And so it's almost like yeah. a good indicator yeah. that we're building something different. Yeah. yeah, and so you actually have that concept. And it's real in your mind and yeah. right and useful and all that. We just don't know the word for it yet on the outside. We haven't playbook. been true with playbook or whatever. So <laughs> uh, the second thing, so they're asking you to be bigger. Uh, and by the way, that's one reason why VC money can help that is because it's just an indicator that, oh, this is real. Mm. Oh, it's a thing now. 
It's just shorthand for it's a thing now. Oh, yeah. big VC funding. Oh, it's a thing now? Whoa, what should, should I do that playbook stuff? Hey, I think you need playbook software. Chris, I cannot tell you how many times we've gone from this. Let me take a half hour to describe it to you without using a category word, right? All that early like, years of this and growing it and trying it on at this. And then the thing grows. And then people say, hey, uh, I, you know, I'm certified in playbook software. They put on the resumes and it's starting to show up in Google searches and all that kind of stuff. That's actually what you're doing in the world. And people yeah. create this. The world doesn't want more categories. So you actually have to fight upstream uh, and make that happen. Yeah. So, um, so the world is uh, the, your review sites and everybody else, a category is when there's a bunch of you. Yeah. If you're the only one, then is it really a category yet? But if there's a bunch and everybody's doing it, remember social media management software when Hootsuite and, you know, uh, all those came out and there's a thousand of them. It, generally that's how categories explode is, uh, the, all of a sudden, people, it's a problem. Everybody recognizes the problem. People race in, solve the problem. Then there's a dozen of these, yeah. right? And then what happens? Uh, then there's two. <laughs> yeah. There's iPhone and Android, Uber Coke and, and Lyft and, you know, uh, Coke and Pepsi, uh, yeah. QuickBooks, and who else is the? Zero. Zero. Okay, you know that, right? You're a savvy guy. Most people don't even know the number two in small business accounting software. In the old mm. days, there was 25 small business accounting software. Yeah. And so, yeah. So um, remember everything that exists that we put a name on Republican party, uh, COVID-19, right. There's a war for calling it different things and all that yeah. uh, didn't exist before. And we put names on it and the people think from the outside, the crowds do this or it just happens or whatever. No, it is Very not. Intentional. It's a battle to create that and to own it. And, well, hopefully this was a little bit of a glimpse into the category we're creating. So if somebody's yeah. listening to this years from now, you'll be able to see where the playbook category was just emerging. But Greg, I, I wanna ask you about something you've been working on too that seems to be scaling really fast and seems to be simple, and that's Greg's List. I see yeah. a new city popping up like every week I log Boston. into the LinkedIn. Yeah, it's on we there just now. Boston, yeah. So it's such a cool resource. So can you share just quickly what it is and why you came up with it? Yeah. Um, Greg's List at gregslist.com is my curated list of software companies in local cities. It started in Phoenix uh, when I was just helping a bunch of founders uh, four years ago and, and I bet you just after that. Um, and everybody said, well, you know, can't really do it. It's not really a software town in Phoenix. Again, but like a mindset thing made up and, hmm. and, um, there's no funding and talent and the rest. And I'm like, I help two category creating companies get to 100 million in Phoenix. One of them I helped start or started. And um, I don't know who started this rumor. And then pretty soon I found 100 software CEOs in town. And then I, people started following me around for my Evernote list. And then I started publishing the list of all the software companies. And I kept adding to it. I'd beat you. I'd add you to it. And I go to the pitch competition and the events and all the people in my network and just build. There are 565 live active software SaaS companies on Greg's List Phoenix. Hmm. And there's almost 500 in Dallas. It'll go over 500 in Boston in a couple months. There's a lot more going on in Phoenix. And so you just can't. So, un, uh, so what is it? It's a list. It's a directory of software company. So it's a, I didn't invent directory, but it's a directory of real software companies. So it's free and go there uh, and it's Phoenix. So you can't find it on Crunchbase or LinkedIn or the rest. It may take you as long as I did it. And so investors, job seekers and founders and community leaders can go there and say, wow, here's everybody. Let's go help them. Yeah. So investors are all over it, by the way. I talked yeah. to about uh, 20 investors a month. Oh, that's uh, great. But job seekers and all that. And through, so yeah, through COVID, I saw, I saw you added a, a jobs portion of it. So is that something yeah. you had planned to do to expand in job boards or that just kind of was a, an opportunity you took advantage of? Well, it was kind of like Greg's List. It just started because of the conversations I was having with people. So uh, mid-March, uh, third week of March, people were calling me, friends of mine calling me saying, I was in the marketing event management software or travel software. We just had a major layoff. I'm looking for a job. So all of a sudden, A players and leaders were looking for jobs. And, yeah. you know, you, these are all hard people to find, as you know. So 
So uh, we published a list of the talent and we started posting jobs like, hey, you could go over here. So over 30 people in Phoenix have found jobs because people found them on Greg's List. So it's, Greg's List is a free community resource uh, meant to help the entrepreneurs get access to the resources they need to grow up. And we know, I know how hard it is to grow a business. Yeah. And yeah, so you're, you've got the hardest job, buddy. So thanks for doing it. <laughs> well, thank you. No, like the word needs your playbook software and then Phoenix needs a big software company and like that's, yeah. that's, uh, as you're companies changing the get brand created, here. yes. And it's a great resource. So if you're, whatever city you're in, check it out. I'm sure it'll, Greg's list will be in your city pretty soon. So Greg, as we round this out, we've got the double tap, five questions just to oh end this rapid fire, whatever comes to mind. So first question, what's a brand you think has perfected its process that you admire? Well, I don't use the word process with brands, but uh, I sure love what Zoom did. They weren't a category creator. They came at the benefit to target customer and they took over video conferencing this year and exploded it. So yeah. um, Zoom has the word video conferencing equals Zoom this year. And that's that's the that's winning the Super Bowl. They've become Kleenex. Yeah. And they didn't invent it, by the way. Yeah. They did yeah. it better. They came out of nowhere, punched everybody right. in the face and walked over them. Uh, who's someone that's coached or mentored you? Uh, in the last year, uh, another guy in Phoenix there, marketing leader, is named Park Howell. Do you know Park? No, I don't. Uh, uh, business of story. He's an expert at uh, narrative uh, storytelling and marketing and branding. And oh, uh, he's helped me a ton. And, uh, uh, and is a good friend of mine. I'll look him up. Uh, your favorite book or podcast? Uh, the podcast I choose most often if I have to choose one uh, is this week in startups, Jason Calacanis. So yeah, I, love it. I get to, I get to hear in, he, he talks to founders and investors and, you know, accelerator leaders and all kinds of people very fast, very useful. He learns a lot. Uh, he's doing what you're doing. He's learning something on every podcast and uh, yeah, it's totally fun. That's great. Uh, similar, most entertaining person you follow online. I don't really follow celebrities or entertainers, but I would have to say Elon Musk is the most entertaining. He, he is a master <laughs> of his attention. game. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, he and the president of the United States know how to play the narrative game, uh, you know. That's like for sure. And last one, what's one app you can't live without? Well, let's see here. Uh, during the COVID crisis, it was the Chipotle app. I could just press a button and then walk in <laughs> uh, kind of thing. But out here in that. Dallas, uh, I got used to 23 years in Phoenix to not paying attention to the weather. But I moved to Dallas and the weather changes. So the AccuWeather app that you could push and like literally see where the clouds are that are coming through because uh, it changes rapidly here. And you're just as likely to get a big storm or a, something out of nowhere here. So it's pretty crazy. <laughs> I love that. No one's ever said weather or food. So you're, you're keeping it yeah. simple. It's a big yeah. categories. People need weather. People need food. So I appreciate that. Those are the two most interesting ones. I use all the standard ones. Everybody. Sure. Uses. Awesome. Well, Greg, thanks so much for your time. This has been great for everyone that's listening. Look up Greg Head. Go to scalingpoint.com. Uh, check out his resources. Learn more about the six points. Learn more about categories and see what you fit into or what you're creating just like I have. Thanks again, Greg. Hey, thanks for listening to Process Makes Perfect. If you're watching on YouTube, we do have an audio version available everywhere you listen to your podcast, so be sure to check that out. If you liked what you heard, please leave a review and be sure to subscribe to the channel here. And we'd love if you would tell a few friends or family or anyone you think that could benefit from this. You can find me on social media anywhere at Chris Ronzio or the company Trainual, that's train U-A-L, like a training manual, at Trainual, anywhere you wanna follow us. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.